Happy Wednesday, April 10th, everyone. Hunter here again at Weather on the Go. And in today's weather forecast, we have a moderate risk of severe weather. That's a level four out of five. And we'll be breaking down the timing of the storms with that moderate risk today. And a major warming trend is in the offing for the weekend as temperatures will be spiking up to 30 degrees above normal across parts of the country and another substantial severe weather outbreak looming as we go into next week. We'll be diving into everything that you need to know in today's weather forecast. So thank you guys for joining. If you are not a subscriber here to Weather on the Go, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below for detailed, accurate weather forecasts throughout the year. We will keep you covered. Also be sure to press the like button down below. It really does help out more than you know. So let's look at our moderate risk of severe weather today. We do have that red shade of color. That is your level four out of five, your moderate risk. That includes eastern Louisiana, southern Mississippi, including the Jackson area over here into southwestern Alabama, including the Mobile, Alabama vicinity. But severe weather could be occurring as far north as Kentucky and Tennessee later on today. And looking at the biggest threat here is severe damaging winds that could be up to hurricane force here with within this dash shaded line across Louisiana here into southern portions of Mississippi, southwestern portions of Alabama and extreme northwest Florida. Those areas we could be seeing 75 mile per hour wind gusts or greater and a substantial tornado threat as well in this 10 to 15 percent probability of an EF2 or stronger tornado here from Lake Charles eastward through Jackson, through New Orleans, through Baton Rouge, getting into Mobile. Even the Panama City area has to be on high alert overnight tonight for a strong tornado risk. So let's look at the timing here for this morning. We have a mesoscale convective system here. This is a storm that is going to be producing some widespread damaging winds, hail, and a couple of tornadoes possible already this morning moving across eastern Louisiana and into Mississippi. As we go into this afternoon, that mesoscale convective system will be traveling across Alabama here with supercells developing over the northern Gulf of Mexico and moving inland, those supercells could be the ones to rotate and produce that substantial tornado risk as we go into this afternoon and into this evening. We have more of a nocturnal tornado threat here across Alabama, especially southern and southeastern Alabama and into northwest Florida. So we need to be on high alert for that as we go into this evening. Looking at our max helicity tracks, this essentially just shows you where those longer lived supercells will be either producing very large hail or potentially those strong tornadoes. And notice it's down here across Louisiana, southern Mississippi, and into portions of southern Alabama, northwestern Florida, even southwestern Georgia needs to keep an eye on this through Thursday. Those long lived supercells are the ones that could produce a lot of severe weather later on today. The severe weather continues on Thursday. We have a slight risk of severe weather up here into the eastern Ohio Valley entering into the mid-Atlantic states, western PA into portions of Ohio, northeast Kentucky, and into West Virginia. We have another slight risk further south into southern South Carolina, southern Georgia, into north central Florida here with a larger marginal risk, a level one out of five in between in that dark green shade of color. And the biggest threat tomorrow will likely be damaging winds and hail, but a few tornadoes will be possible. Again, up here in this brown shade of color across Ohio, Northeast Kentucky, West Virginia, and Western Pennsylvania. We'll keep an eye on that. And then further south, this brown shade of color down here across Southern South Carolina, Southern Georgia, and Northern Florida for tomorrow as well. Let's look at the timing here. Thursday morning, the low pressure system is up here in the Ohio Valley. We have enhanced wind shear and coupled with some instability could lead to an enhanced tornado threat across portions of the Eastern Ohio Valley, the areas we just mentioned there. We do have a cold frontal boundary that will be draped across the Carolinas, coastal Georgia, and North Florida at the beginning of the period on Thursday morning. This could be promoting more widespread storm activity, but some of those could rotate Thursday morning. Thursday afternoon, we're watching it across the eastern Carolinas. That cold frontal boundary will start to move offshore. We are watching supercells there in Ohio as we go into Thursday afternoon. Those could rotate. We are near the low pressure storm track. We also have, again, enhanced wind shear 
you're in that environment Thursday afternoon for peak daytime heating. Those storms will continue to move north and eastbound and weaken as we lose the daytime heating into Thursday evening, but we'll keep an eye on that. Overall, this is going to be a very wet system. We are going to see healthy rainfall totals across the eastern third of the country from the northeast, down through the mid-Atlantic, the Great Lakes, Ohio Valley vicinity, southward through the southeast, and the heaviest rains setting up shop near the Gulf Coast here, New Orleans to Hattiesburg, over here into Mobile, the Panama City area. Definitely seeing widespread totals, possibly over six inches in some of these areas through Saturday, April the 13th, and this is a concern because a lot of this is going to be coming within the next 24 to 48 hours. There is a moderate risk of flash flooding here from eastern Louisiana through southern Mississippi, southern Alabama, southwest Georgia, and northwest Florida here with a large slight risk all the way up here into portions of the Mid-South and into the Ohio Valley through Thursday. And then Thursday into Friday time frame, a large marginal risk across the majority of the eastern seaboard, including the Ohio Valley and Great Lakes, but in an, a little bit more enhanced zone of uh, flash flooding for the Mid-Atlantic states over here on Thursday into Friday with that slight risk from Southern New York State into New Jersey, east central portions of Pennsylvania down into Maryland and portions there of Northern Virginia and West Virginia as we go into Thursday, Friday, and then mainly a main event as we go into Friday into Saturday, mainly interior New England. We'll be keeping an eye on the flooding threat up there later on this week. This weekend, a major warming trend is likely as we go into Saturday, April 13th and Sunday, April 14th in the wake of our system that is producing all of that significant severe weather later on here this week, we're going to see a warming trend, a rebound in our temperatures. And look at this, folks, our temperature anomalies, 20 to 30 degrees above the norm across the northern high plains as we go into Saturday. That'll spread east into the Midwest, the upper Midwest, Great Lakes region on Sunday with temperatures that could be up to 30 degrees above the norm for this time of year. And then that continues even into early next week on Monday, going into Tuesday time frame. And then by Wednesday, notice we're still above normal in the east, but the colder anomaly starting to move in. Yes, that signals a cold frontal boundary associated with our next low pressure storm system as we go into next week. So let's look at this here. Late this weekend by Sunday, we see some vorticity. This is your 500 millibar vorticity map, and this basically shows the lift and spin in the atmosphere. And you can see that out here and entering into Utah, into Arizona and Nevada later this weekend on Sunday. That'll be ejecting a across the Plain States and into the upper Midwest by early next week. And this could be our next substantial severe weather maker across the country. So let's look here on Sunday, rain snow across portions of the Pacific Southwest. Obviously the snow will be in the higher elevations the rainfall will be falling in the lower elevations in coastal California. There we go into Monday, a strong 988 millibar low here across the Nebraska panhandle. We have some marginally cold air across the Rockies, so definitely watching out in the southeastern Wyoming into western Colorado for heavier snows, but the warm sector is going to be more substantial with this system than we have seen all spring long. So this is concerning on Monday, and then this will deepen to a 982 millibar of our low into Wisconsin, northern Wisconsin on Tuesday. And a strengthening low pressure system in April typically brings severe weather. So let's look at this on Monday. Yes, day six outlook from the Storm Prediction Center, six days out, is already confident in putting an enhanced risk. This is a level three out of five on the scale from southern Kansas through central portions of Oklahoma and into northern Texas here but a larger slight risk, a level two out of five here in the yellow, stretching from Iowa, Nebraska, southward through Kansas, western Missouri, northwest Arkansas through Oklahoma, and into northwest Texas here. So a large scale possible tornado outbreak could be in the offing as we go into Monday. And let's look at the setup here. Very sharp dry line across the Great Plains, especially there into the central and eastern plains. Dew points rising into the 60s, all the way up into the Midwest, into the Hawkeye state of Iowa, the land of Lincoln and Illinois there on Monday, 
And the instability reservoir is more robust, more widespread than we have seen it all year and moving further north as well. So into the Midwest, we're going to start to see some unstable air next week on Monday. And this is not good, folks. We have a very strong neutral to negatively tilted trough here. Very strong mid-level jet in the 500 millibar layer. Very strong looking low-level jet in the 850 millibar layer to potentially rotate some of these storms for tornado genesis. So we'll continue to watch this early estimates. This is your lightning flash density. This shows you where thunderstorms may be on Monday afternoon. This will change a million and a half times before we get here, but just giving you a general big picture that we could be seeing supercells raging across the Great Plains in the Midwest Monday afternoon and going into Monday night here. And it is possible that that outlook I just showed you from the Storm Prediction Center, it is six days out. So the outlook will be changing and they may be upgrading some of the probabilities of severe weather, they may be shifting the area of concern as well. So potentially an area of interest could also be Illinois, Wisconsin, Iowa, Missouri, into northern Arkansas. Even though you're not highlighted right now, you could be seeing some severe weather potential going into Monday evening, Monday night time frame. And that may even continue into the western Ohio Valley, places like Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, as we go into Tuesday. Then as we go into the middle of next week, we have another system swinging down from Canada. This is going to bring a secondary cold front with it later next week. This is going to be producing more potential stronger storms across the Corn Belt region into the southeast. Wednesday, Thursday time frame, here comes that cold front. And then as we go into Friday, that's going to kind of linger across the eastern United States. So all in all, another heavy rain producer during that five-day period from Monday, April 15th through Friday, April 19th, another soaking rain for areas that do need it as well. And in northeastern Iowa here, we are actually still in an extreme drought. So seeing a couple inches of rain here on the maps is definitely some great news. And hopefully we can chip away at that drought as that time does get closer. So cross your fingers for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please have multiple ways to receive watches warnings today. There is a moderate risk of severe weather, strong long track tornadoes and hurricane force wind gusts are our biggest risks. We may be going live throughout the day, so make sure to turn on all notifications for that. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope everyone has a wonderful rest of their Wednesday out there.